the dream, we create miracles. Yes. And when we are able to carry positive energy in the times of adversity, we manifest miracles. So it's the choice to not buy into um, the perceptions and belief systems that sabotage our potential, but in those moments to really say, this is where I am most needed and my abilities are most needed to counteract something that I could choose to take me further away from who I am or closer to who I am. Yeah. And so I love adversity because it's always like, oh, yeah, you want to make me forget? Well, watch. Yeah. <laughs> because this is the moment that I'm not. And um, so it can be fun. Some people look at it as a distraction or they get really stressed or feel defeated. And it's really great to just realize this is the real work is, yeah. to, is to just face it head on and, um, and, get excited. And, and keep rising. And get excited about it. You know, it's an opportunity to grow some more, really, some more things to learn. And, you know, I think um, – like workers tend to really goad the universe. We're like, yeah, is that all you got? Come on, bring it on. I want more. And I really see these souls coming before coming to earth, choosing all these different challenges and problems at this grocery store kind of a thing. And they're filling their cart with all these difficulties for their life that they're going to have. And they're at the checkout and God and the angels are like, are you sure you don't need a hand with that? As they're trying to carry all these bags and like, no, no, I got it. I'm fine. I'm fine. And I'm sure I'll remember as well, you know, and then the amnesia veil is so thick. We're like, oh no, right? What, what will we do? But really it's just um, this excitement of um, the peekaboo and hide and seek with the divine is how I look at it. And you're saying about it not being much work to um, unearth this about herself. I feel that's right. I mean, we're looking for enlightenment in, in books and in gurus and so forth rather than seeing it in every moment, right? In, in, underneath your bed and your, your belly button. Everything can be th this moment of enlightenment. And I think it comes to be with just being in joy, like when you were a child, right? Just playing and not taking things so, so seriously because that weighs you down, makes you dance physically but also mentally as well and I feel that that's what the Mayans were about with weighing the heart to see if it was lighter than a feather angels taking themselves lightly that's why they're able to fly light at heart when you're in love right and that raises our vibration so yeah, that's that's my perspective on, and take on it and I think you you say it the same way but just your own beautiful way so I love you just interweaving um, our pers perspectives together it's really wonderful yeah no it's really great I mean we, we definitely uh, speak the same language um, in our own ways, I mean, it, just, it really just makes a similar point. Um, Both yeah, verbal and, uh, you know, we, we don't want to get overwhelmed. Our true essence is enlightenment. It's not something we have to attain. It's something that we need to really remember and re remove the things that, you know, undermine it. Um, it's, it's, it's who we are naturally, and so it's amazing to think that it comes so naturally that the only way that we can lose touch with it is to have these sophisticated agendas in mind control. Because if it wasn't for these technologies and these agendas, we would all be enlightened. This is an invasive force that has come in and distracted us and gotten in our way. Because that's, they are not who we really are, but in a sense, our amnesia to who we really are is what created that shadow. Boom. And so that remembrance can be instant, and it's, and it's very much um, just self-love um, yeah, and joy. That, and not it. being defined by anything but what matters most to you. And... Um, and we see incredible examples of that. Um, you know, to see teenagers and people in our culture and all the bullies and, and just how targeted our self-esteems are at young ages um, and just the fact that a lot of us spend our adulthood healing from our childhood, um, you know, when, when we start off in, with that essence, you know, is amazing to me. And so it isn't something we have to work so hard to reclaim, but it's definitely there's lifestyle choices that can support it mm -hmm. rather than make it, you know, a challenge to maintain there food, is. you know, exercise, all that you know, hunky dory stuff. Just to remember that there is no mistakes or there is nothing to regret or be upset to put ourselves down or make us think that we are less than. Everything really is perfect. And if it did not happen that way, if we cannot see the gift in it, how we, if we cannot see how things have perfectly shaped and molded us, you know, all the things that's happened to make us into who we are to do what we came here to do. I mean, it's all about our attitude and our relationship towards ourself in life that really makes all the difference if we self-destruct or if we're going to go above and beyond. And um, what else was I going to say to that? Ah. It's so hard with you because it's so quick. We, we're so much like verbal Picassos. It just comes so fast. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. but I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's awesome because... Um, they are so aware, the Illuminati, of uh, that deeper story, mm -hmm. and uh, that's, you know, why it's been targeted. They understand the occult. Um, even, you know, those that are 
really behind the scenes of the rituals and the churches that run the Illuminati. Mm -hmm. Even in their rituals, the Divine Feminine is targeted. They yep. specifically use the name Sophia, mm -hmm. um, which is just the name of wisdom. It's not like it needs to be an identity, but it's that wisdom. It's that feminine energy. And so to you know, hearing people who have defected from that church that really map out those rituals and the symbolism that they use and the archetypes that they use and the blueprints, you know, you know, like uh, Horus, Isis, and Osiris, um, that they use, you know, is mind-boggling. Um, and, uh, you know, there's generators and creators and there's imitators. And the technological world has been an incredible imitation of our abilities. And um, it's, it's caused us to, you know, need the tools um, in exchange for getting in touch with our, our, our abilities. Um, and I know a lot of people understand that. But... Um, yeah, this, this uh, you know, real technology, of, you know, from higher races, from our, the higher beings in, our, uh, in the multiverse are connected to sound healing and color and things that affect our senses, whereas the lower, you know, technologies are all connected to, you know, mind control and timeline manipulation. Mm -hmm. But these same technologies, you know, like teleportation and time travel are sort of that neutral energy that are, that's in the wrong people's hands. Right. Because that doesn't have a positive or a negative, it just needs to be used correctly because um, obviously if you're if they're using, you know, time control technologies and time travel to manipulate timelines and to set up scenarios and to project what we're going to be feeling after a false flag, you know, using virtual reality holograms to uh, to see how we're gonna react and to use them in such a way to manipulate all of us um, is where uh, those technologies aren't negative, they're just in the wrong hands. And so, you know, that's why you and I both totally appreciate Andrew Bishago as he's revealing these technologies and really wanting to expose them so that we can use them in the proper manner, so that we can go to places like Somalia and be there in three seconds to give them food and supplies. Yes. You know, so while they're like doing all these agendas and there's so many people in need and we have our politicians act like they care, but behind the scenes they're using everything that could solve all these problems, it's, it's wonderful to see people starting to stand up and say, enough. They might be dealing with the corporate greed, but there needs to be something else that says enough and starts to really go into deeper territory because um, if we focus too much on the protests and we get too into um, some of these surface complaints, even though they're absolutely legitimate because they affect our survival, yeah. um, they're going to start steering this toward martial law yeah. and uh, because it's very much, you know, one of those positive false flags, just like the Mars recruitment, just yeah. like how they used, uh, use people in war. Mm -hmm. They take advantage of that person that wants to serve humanity, and they say, here, fight for this cause. Mm -hmm. and, and even the person who recruited me to go to Mars was convinced that he was doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. So um, I just you know, want to just point that out about the Occupy movement. I'm so excited about it, but um, it definitely has some manipulative roots, and uh, we just have to be really, really careful and start to address really what these um, possibilities are that they might steer this towards I and was, call it out before yeah. it starts to manifest. I was thinking about that because they did that with the G22, peaceful, you know, people outside uh, the, the Bilderberg meeting and they were just, you know, sharing and informing people and singing and then they just have one person who is dressed up, you know, like everybody else, but, it, uh, cl you know, clearly works for them and they're able to, you know, just cause some kind of riot suddenly and, and burn a cop car that burns perfectly, you know, um, and just now it's like, okay, look, now they're dangerous. See? See, they can't be trusted kind of thing. And the exact same thing was done in uh, Germany as well in the 80s. And the same thing with the way the cop car was burnt and uh, claiming that they were the Antichrist and so forth. So, you know, it's textbook, and we should get really familiar with the patterns of how this works. So when I see what's happening in New York and all these other um, countries that are wanting to do this as well, just uh, being aware that that kind of energy, how quickly they can take it and twist it to their advantage and say, look, we need to. But what's interesting, though, with what's happening in New York is they're, they're beating up. The cops are signaling out just pe one person, people at a time. So, say there were grannies they were beating up and young kids and so forth. And every time they do that, just more and more people come and are there to uh, support them. I saw a, a satellite picture of it, and it was amazing how many people were there. So that's a big concern. Um, that uh, you know, it's the thing is, it's inevitable that we're going to have to have everything collapse. The, the economy, the, the the monetary system, um, and you know, obviously. It's, it could be a controlled collapse because obviously they want 
it to collapse so that they can implement the microchip and start to, you know, use a different type of currency. But the, the goal is that things will collapse and we'll be the ones that rebirth the new paradigm and that we'll be the ones that um, offer the solutions and that people won't look to the government and to anybody to solve anything when things really collapse, but to look to all of us and that we're all pulling together and sharing our skills and what we're able to do and that no more attention is given to them. When things collapse, yeah. we need to turn our attention to this, this movement between all of us. Um, and of course they plant people to create wars amongst each other, but some of us hold a vibration that doesn't allow that to happen. And uh, people need to focus on the energy and the frequency because we're in a frequency war. That's why technology is used. That's why uh, mind control is used. That's why ELF and things, you know, and harp is used. It's all about the frequency. It's all about how it makes us feel. I mean, there's things coming out of our TV that are, are meant to induce depression and meant to induce anxiety. And um, it's all, you know, geared towards really also breaking up relationships and making us all just um, crazed. And so, uh, you know, we uh, need to, you know, live the example by um, understanding that once we overcome those frequencies and we create that harmony and unity amongst each other, we can be in the now and like dreamers, you know, shift out of it rather than be in the struggle and be in the duality of, of the fight where we're victims and we're being wronged. Um, it's, it's, it's something we have to rise above and be senior to. And, you know, the, it almost sounds philosophical, philosophical, <laughs> That's uh, but at the same time, I mean, it's, it's also based on experience. I mean, I wouldn't be here today if, if these particular concepts um, didn't come into my awareness because when I was targeted to go to Mars, I was dealing with all these technologies, you know, that were being thrown at me um, that I didn't, that, that, didn't stop until I started to talk about it publicly. And they kind of knew like, okay, she wasn't supposed to know all the stuff about us. So all of a sudden this force just lifted and, and, and they were gone. And, and that, that level of attack was gone. Um, so the thing is when we out them and we not just talk about the, the, the symptoms of, of corporate greed and our survival, and we talk about really the deeper stuff um, and we out them on that, on that level, that's, really a potent thing and uh, I, I, I know that firsthand but I mean obviously there's there's more than just that and you know everybody's got a different insight to share and we, we, we all need a voice um, I'm, we're, I'm grateful to have a voice you, you have a voice um, I'm, I'm really into just making sure that everybody feels that they have a voice though you know what? So me too. I totally agree. And just even using my spotlight to uh, bring as many people as possible who want to share and have their chance to have a platform, you know, um, with their message to the world, that is an honor to be able to help in that way. Um, something you were saying though that just moves me so much and makes me just feel so amazed and even more in love with humanity is just when you hear about these stories, your story or other people who've been seriously mind controlled and had the works done to them to stop them into, you know, being who they, you know, or doing what they came here to do, it, despite all of that, despite all the sophistication and manipulation, it doesn't work. It's still not working. So it just makes me think like, who are we? Who are we that, you know, the people, these beings are working so hard to, to stop us and it's just, you know, we're still progressing and go, moving beyond that at a very, a very fast speed as well, right? So how quickly we are learning and now growing through the accumulation of, of the past of, um, you know, being uh, the dreams of, of, our, of our ancestors, you know, being the, the stories of our ancestors and, and um, learning these patterns now and... Um, seeing our potential firsthand and just being told all the time that you're no good, you're no good. And then we are just like, wait a second, where does that come from? Actually, yes, I am. Yes, I can do this, right? The world doesn't have to be this way. It just, it comes out so strongly that I can clearly see why beings on the other side are, are also so in love with humanity, guides and so forth, why we have all this help and, and respect and appreciation and understanding and giving us the room to be able to, to make mistakes and, and, um, knowing that we will clean it up as well that you know when people get upset that God doesn't answer their prayers I think that God has more faith in us than we have in them the very fact that we are here is the answer to that prayer because we probably looked at earth and saw what was happening and said like how we are when we watch movies if I was this character if I was in this situation I would be able I would do this this and this right it's always so easy when you're observing it from the, the sidelines and so God is like okay go in there and you're gonna have this situation and you know let's see you you know be that true and that light and anchoring that understanding so yes just, absolutely 
I, I remember just being a little kid and I just, I knew what I was here to do. And I was being prepared for everything that I went through. 